All right, so uh, for today's project, we're going to be looking at the work of Roy Lichtenstein, in particular his onomatopoeia drawings. Um, <clears throat> so onomatopoeia is a word that sounds like the sound it makes. Um, and he took that a step further and put a visual to it too. So not only what does the word make the sound it makes, but what would that look like? What would that sound look like? Um, and he did it in a kind of cartoon style. So um, you get to pick what word you're doing, what onomatopoeia word. You could do wham, kaboom, boom, pow, um, splat, ka-ching. Um, really, you can get as creative as you want. Um, <clears throat> the main thing is once you pick your word that you're going to do bubble or block letters. So uh, you might want to practice with pencil before you do your final because block letters are a little tricky. Um, an easy way to do it is to first, very lightly, draw the actual letter you're going to do. So I'm yeah, doing I mean, I, I splat. So I would draw an S and then add a little line going horizontally to make it wider. And then try and mirror that width all the way around the letter. So I that distance I'm gonna try and keep all the way around the S. So right there, that would be too skinny. I would need to make it wider. And you might have to erase or even erase the original line. Like the bottom of this S I have going in too far. So I'm gonna erase it and make it go just a little bit further to the left and then draw the second line. And again, I always like to keep my mistakes in until I have it correctly drawn and then I go back and take an eraser and erase whatever mistake that I made. So that inside line, I'm erasing now. <clears throat> so you'll just go through letter by letter. So for a P, I'll draw a P and then I try and make it thicker. I draw that horizontal line um, about as thick as I did for the S and try and make it that wide all the way through. Again, bubble letters and block letters are something that are kind of tricky and the more you do it, the more you practice, the better you're going to get. Um, so you can play around. You could also play around with doing things like maybe you do splat, but you have the actual letter dripping. So you would have like little drips coming off of the word splat. Um, you can get as creative as you want with this. And it doesn't need to be the same font as me. You can make it as stylized as you want. Now I've drawn my letters really big. If I could do it again, I would actually draw them a little bit smaller so that I have more room to decorate the rest of my paper. So once you get your letters, you're going to start decorating with what you think that sound looks like. When I think of splat, I think of something smushed that's kind of oozing and dripping on the floor. Like maybe like someone stepped on gum and it's squashed everywhere. So I'm drawing these kind of curvy splatter marks and then I'm gonna have some drops flying off of them. And the goal is to fill the page. Um, so not just do one tiny little decoration and then leave the paper blank. I'm really trying to draw so that the whole paper is decorated. If I did an explosion, like you saw at the beginning, you could do like kaboom, you could do smoke, and lightning bolts and stars and um, little kind of fire explosion marks. If you did um, pow, same thing. Like a lot of times when I think of pow, I think of maybe someone got hit, so you could do a lightning bolt um, or action lines. Um, so again, get as creative as you want. Now, once you get it all drawn, you can keep it simple or really complicated. But once you get all drawn in pencil, you're going to outline everything in black because Lichtenstein's style was very cartoony, so they all had outlines. You can do black marker, you can do black crayon, you could do black color pencil, um, anything black that you have, outline it. 
And then once you get everything outlined, including the letters and the, for me, I'll be outlining the actual like splatter mark, um, you're going to start coloring it in. And when you color it, you can use what is called the dot matrix style. And uh, Lichtenstein used this in his paintings, but it comes from comic books, from printing. Um, after the war, there wasn't a lot of money, and so comic books were needed to be printed really cheaply. Um, and in order to save money, instead of printing in a solid color, they would print with these little dots with spaces in between them so they didn't have to use as much ink. Um, and Lichtenstein saw that and put it in his paintings. So instead of coloring in the S straight red, you would do little dots of red throughout the whole thing in kind of these neat rows. And the bigger the dot is, the easier it's going to be to color. So if you want to do like a, a hundred dots, then do them tiny. Otherwise, you can go back like I'm doing right now and make them a little bigger so it goes a little faster. Um, Lichtenstein loved to use primary colors, so I would use a lot of reds, yellows, and blues. Uh, but if you want to add, you know, any colors you want, do it. Um, I would say it looks best when you color everything. So even if you do that dot matrix for everything, I would color in the letters with um, each one, either maybe all of them get with the red, and then maybe the splat is yellow with the dots, and then the background is blue. So the whole page has been colored.